even though I just milled up a few slabs, it will be at least here before they're dry enough to actually use. So I purchased a few slabs from an Austin-based sawmill called Greenwood Milling and made this Live Edge Waterfall Coffee Table. It's called a waterfall coffee table because you cut a portion off that turns into the leg, but you do it with a miter so that the grain is continuous from the top to this leg. The first step in the process was to fill in all of the very many cracks that the slab had with epoxy. I started off by flipping the slab over and taping off all of the cracks and holes that I could see. And this is so that whenever you start pouring in epoxy, it won't just, of course, fall through the other side. I use painter's tape for this. However, I got a lot of recommendations on Instagram when I was doing this that Tyvex tape is actually the better tape for the job. It apparently comes off a lot easier. So just keep that in mind if you do this project. Next was to flip it back over and start filling in all of these cracks and crevices. For this, I'm going with a two to one epoxy made by Total Boat. And the two to one number means that it's two part resin to one part hardener in each mixture. However, something I really like about the Total Boat system is their pumps are designed to make this a lot easier for you. They simplify it to one pump to one pump and the pump dispenses the two to one ratio for you. After following the directions on the stir time, I started pouring it in the cracks. And you can see on this end crack that I once again used painter's tape just so that epoxy would have a stopping point. Now there are a lot of epoxy choices that you can go with, but the Total Boat system is very good at self-leveling and it's also extremely clear. On that note, keep in mind that you could tint the epoxy if you don't want it clear. What I would do is go through and pour in until the crack had an overflowing amount of epoxy on top of it. Then I would move on to a different area while that settled, come back with the heat gun to get rid of the air bubbles. Then once it settled a bit more, I would fill it up again. And I would do this until it stopped taking any more epoxy. If you're needing epoxy, then use coupon code APRILW over at totalboat.com to get 20% off your purchase. On top of 20% off, it ships free within the US and this coupon code is valid until December of 2019. So you have an entire year to utilize it. Now on to flattening it out. I started off with my large random orbital sander and on this Triton sander, there are two settings, a more aggressive and a more gentle. And since I had a lot of epoxy to remove, I put it on the more aggressive setting to start with. And this made really quick work of getting it all leveled out. And then I switched it over to the more gentle setting to run along the entire live edge. Okay, up next was cutting in the miter that will drop off the portion of the table that will become the leg. I'll be using my track saw for this, and I started off by getting a square cut on the end of my slab. I mean, kind of square. I don't have a true reference to get squares, so I eyeballed it by using a square against my track and then lining it up with what looked like a straight line down center. And this will at least get me close to where now I can pull two tape references off of this cut and set up my track in order to now cut the 45. I tilted over my track saw. And just a note, if you have the Triton saw, there is a foot you can move over into the track to keep it from falling off the track whenever you have it at a bevel. Instead of trying to do it all in one pass, I actually made it in three different passes. So I would make a pass, set the depth a little bit deeper, make another pass, and then repeat. And this is the part that kind of confused me whenever I was looking into this process. So I made you guys a visual reference that's easier to handle than my two large slabs. All right, this is the cut that I just made, one 45 degree cut. If I were to take the off cut and rotate it at a 90, you can see that the miters don't made up. You would have to flip this off cut around for it to do that. But then of course you would mess up the flowing grain orientation. So now I have to make a second 45 degree cut in order to remove their triangle piece so that it will made it perfectly to the top. And that's the cut that I started setting up for next. The important thing about this cut is to take off as little material as possible from what will be the outside exposed grain. I'm once again using my track saw and so I took my time lining up the track as close to the peak of the cut as I could possibly get it. And then I once again took this in three passes. Okay, with the hardest part done, I now started working on joining these two pieces together. For this, I'm gonna be using the Triton Duo Dowler. However, I did take out one of the router bits in order to make it a single doweler. Since my join here is at a 45, I first set my fence to match and then adjusted the depth of not only the fence, but also the plunge depth. Beware, you are going in at an angle and you wouldn't wanna plunge through your entire workpiece. After getting the tool set up, I put together my slabs and marked off where I wanted the four dowel placements to be cut in at. 
Now even though this is a simple tool to use, I still took my time making sure that it was one, seated on the workpiece properly at a 45, and two, that both of the fences were flush up against the workpiece as I was plunging in the bit. Before laying down any glue, I'm gonna be attaching what's called glue up calls. These are gonna be made out of plywood and used solely to make clamping down on this joint a lot easier. I grabbed a scrap piece of plywood and cut it down the middle at a 45 degree angle. Next I took these and glued them to my workpiece with the 45 degree angles facing away from the joint. I didn't have a lot of time to wait on the glue to dry so for the application I used Tight Bond Thick and Quick since it has a very quick set time. While I left that alone to set up for a few minutes, I started working on the dowels. Anytime I'm using a dowel for a joint, I always put in a spiral cut and this is to give the glue some place to go whenever you put the dowel in the hole so that it won't seize up on you. There's a few different ways to do this, but I use the bandsaw with my miter gauge set to a 45, and I very gently roll it and push it through the blade at the same time. Once the calls were dry, I flipped the slab over and applied painter's tape right up to both of these 45s. And this will prevent a lot of hard cleanup work once the slabs are actually joined. For attaching, I personally went with Tight Bond 2 and I started off by first placing a liberal amount of glue inside each one of the dowel locations. I hammered the dowels in, covered the rest of the joint in Tight Bond 2, and then started putting things together. And now you can see how these calls work. By cutting both of the outside angles on the calls to a 45 degree angle, which matches the miter joint that I have, it gives me two parallel surfaces to get a clamp in there and use the clamp strength in order to fully seat and tighten down on this joint. I absolutely love that trick. I just think it's so cool. After letting that set up overnight, I took off all of the clamps and started working on a cleanup. First removing the tape from that inside 90 degree and then clamping down the workpiece to start removing those plywood calls. One reason for making them plywood is so that you can shear it down one of the layers. I found it to work best to use two chisels and work down the length of the plywood until the entire piece pops off. However, it was suggested to me after doing the glue up that you can lay down some construction paper or even parchment paper or painter's tape in between the call and the slab to make removing this call even more of a cinch. Once removing the majority of the call, I used a chisel to get rid of the bulk waste. Then I came back with a sander to completely clean it up. And since I was sanding, I went ahead and sanded the entire piece to finish. So I started off with about 80 to remove the plywood. Then I went down to 120, then 220. I cleaned it up, getting all of that fine dust off of it. And then I started setting things up to start finishing the table. I'm gonna be finishing both sides. So I got four bench cookies out with a little pointer step on it. And I started off finishing the inside of the table first. After getting the underside coated, I would flip it around, use a two by six in order to prop it up. And then I repeated for the top surface. I'm personally using Minwax Wipe On Poly. I love this finish as I find it the easiest one to not mess up. It's very good at self leveling. It doesn't leave a high glossy plastic look to your piece after it's done. It's very quick to dry, but it's also very durable. As you can see, I just pour it directly on my work piece and then I'm using two paper towels in order to smear it around nice and even. The bark is a little bit rough in order to get the finish on, so I switched from a paper towel to a brush in order to get into all the nook and crannies on that bark. Now you do gotta wait about two to three hours before reapplying, so while that's set up, I started working on the other leg for the table. Originally, I was gonna go with a wooden mesquite trapezoid, which a trapezoid is kind of the go-to leg for this style of table. I started thinking about it and I decided to go with a bow tie shape leg instead. Not a solid bow tie, but just the outline of one. Even though I milled some mesquite last week, of course, none of it's gonna be dry for another year. So I made this leg from some three quarter inch square tubing I had. I started off by drawing this leg to its exact size on a piece of construction paper. Then I took it over to my metalworking side and started cutting the three quarter inch tubing to the size needed. And to do this, I would, I would really cheat. <laughs> I would just place the three quarter inch tubing down on my drawing, then use a square to mark off where it needed to be cut and at what angle. And this not only worked great, but it also worked very quickly. After getting all six of the pieces cut, I first tacked them together and then welded close each joint. 
And I welded them closed, not really for strength, but just because I wanted to paint the leg and you'd be able to see an open joint if I didn't weld them closed. On that same notion, I wanted this to be nice and smooth. So next I grabbed a grinder and grinded down each one of those seams to where at the end of it, it looked like the bow tie was made from one solid piece of metal. And just a tip if you end up doing this, you can see that the top and bottom horizontal pieces are on the top of those vertical pieces. And this meant that I needed to cut some pieces and cap off the ends. However, if you switch the orientation and make the vertical pieces extend past the top and bottom, then you can avoid this step. And the very last thing I did to the leg welding wise is I cut some very thin flat stock, mitered the ends just to give it a little bit nicer of a look and then tacked and welded it in place as well. And this is gonna create a wider footprint on the underside of the table. After getting that stuck into place, I used a scrap piece of wood on my workbench and then drilled three holes across the length of it. At this point, the first coat of wipe-on poly was dry on the table, so I sanded it all down using 320 grit sandpaper, getting it prepped for the second coat. However, I couldn't resist attaching the leg before doing that to see how it looked. I used those three hole locations in the bottom of that flat iron in order to attach it to the bottom side of the slab. But then I continued on with the finishing. In total, I did three coats of finish for this table. Now I made this small coffee table for a chase lounge of mine, but keep in mind, you can do the same process for any table, an entryway table, a desk, an end table. There are no limits. It's a relatively quick one, but a very fun one. And I have linked to other waterfall table videos in the description if you're interested in the topic. I hope that you've enjoyed this one. I will see you soon. Oh boy. I like it.